Feminazi! Opening your eyes to the lies of social justice. This video is being recorded shortly after the terrorist attacks in Brussels, Belgium were carried out. I was thinking about these terrorist attacks, and I was thinking about our recent history with terrorism. Ever since the infamous September 11, 2001 attacks in New York, societies seem to have developed a gripping fear and paranoia regarding terrorism. It would seem that people are willing to give up almost any form of freedom that they enjoy just so that they can be safe. It's dangerous to be willing to give up your freedom in exchange for safety. The reason is, if we are so afraid of terrorism, and we are so hell-bent on avoiding terrorism at all costs and stopping it before it can happen, if we think as a society that that is okay, what we're actually saying is anything that constitutes terrorism must be stopped no matter how horrible it makes our lives to do so. If you want to stop terrorism before it can happen, you have to give up a lot because terrorism is a very low bar to set. If you're willing to give up for such a low bar, then you won't have a life worth living in the first place. I don't think that people understand what they're saying when they say that we should do whatever we have to do to prevent terrorism. What is terrorism? Terrorism is not a very difficult thing to bring about. How does one become a terrorist? It's actually quite simple. Pick up a gun, or get a bag of fertilizer and a blasting cap, and start shooting people or blowing things up. That's all you have to do. That is the bar that you have set for complete elimination of your rights and freedoms. You are willing to give up living in a free society over someone getting a gun and shooting 30 people. I've got bad news for you. It happens all the time. You have incidents like the one in Brussels. But before that, it was San Bernardino. It was New York. It was Paris. Paris. France has some of the strictest gun laws in the world. But Paris. A shooting in Paris. How could this happen? We must stop it from happening. We must give up whatever we must give up to make sure that this never happens again. Well, I hate to break it to you, but you already gave most of it up. And it still happened, because the bar is so low. You will never, ever be able to stop terrorist attacks, because terrorism is easy. It is incredibly simple. I don't understand people who are so willing to give up their lives, to render their lives not worth living, in exchange for not having to worry about some guy being able to pick up a gun. Think about how deeply the surveillance state would have to penetrate into the everyday lives of normal people to be able to ensure that you won't get hit by a terrorist attack. Everyone would effectively have to live in a 24-7 monitored prison cell. That is not an exaggeration. Ever since 9-11 happened, we have been pressured by all kinds of people who are absolutely afraid of terrorism. Terrorism is a concept. Terrorism is not a tangible item. Terrorism is not something you can grab and hold in your hand and crush. Terrorism is not something you can lock away in a chest in the attic and keep from your family. It doesn't work that way. Terrorism is a description of human behavior. And unless you're going to do whatever it takes to stop humans from being able to engage in behaviors that aren't approved, you won't stop terrorism. I want you to really ponder this before you go out and say that you're willing to give up or you're willing to voluntarily drop your rights and your freedoms just because someone else is able to pick up a firearm and shoot 30 people. Is it really worth it? With over 310 million people in the United States of America alone, is it really worth giving up the rights of 309,999,999 people because one person can kill off 30 others? That's all I have to say. There's not much else that can be said. What bothers me is that we've been living with things like the Patriot Act for 15 years, massive curtailment of personal liberty, money laundering laws that keep people from being able to do something as simple as buy a used car with cash without it being reported to the government, all under the guise of protecting us from terrorism and the money laundering that fuels it. Well, I have bad news for you. It's not going to help. Do you really want to live in a society where it's not legal to pay for anything that's non-trivial in cash? Do you really want to live in a society where you don't have any financial privacy because money laundering? You don't have any right to speak out and say what you really think because terrorism. You can't buy a gun because terrorism. You can't discuss controversial subjects because terrorism. You can't say certain words 
because terrorism. You can't get on an airplane without having your genitals groped and those of your children because terrorism. You can't get on a train because terrorism. You can't fly somewhere because your name got on a no-fly list because terrorism. Do you really want to live in this society? Is this what you want? Is this where you really want to go with your life? Are you so hell-bent on living in a padded cell that you will slowly but surely build the padded cell for yourself? The governments are already trying to build your padded cell for you. Now, with the terrorism crowbar, you are throwing down your arms and gladly giving everything up in order to be safe from terrorism. Too bad you can't say anything or do anything without having to worry about constantly being monitored and accidentally saying the wrong word at the wrong time or with the wrong inflection might get you flagged as a potential terrorist yourself. But that's okay. We need to be safe from you because terrorism. The interesting thing about the application of laws is that those laws apply to everyone, not just a select few. If you're willing to give up your rights and you are willing to be surveilled, if you are willing to have your phones tapped and monitored 24 hours a day, because if everyone's phones are monitored, we'll catch the terrorists more easily, then what happens whenever you happen to say something with the wrong inflection, or you have a bad day and you say something that you don't mean, or you make a joke and it's interpreted seriously, by those who are watching, who are always watching. What happens when all of the controls that are put in place and all of the monitoring of you and everyone else happens to pick you up in the dragnet? What happens when you become the terrorist that the society has to be protected from, even if you're not actually going to do anything bad? What happens then? What happens when you are the bad guy? When you are the one who is thrown into a prison cell because it would be better to put you away and be sure than to let you remain free and have any risk of being attacked. You're building your own prison brick by brick. The government doesn't even have to try anymore. The surveillance state doesn't even have to do anything because you're building your own cell and you're doing so happily because that cell is safe. What life is more worth living? The life where you have a very minute risk of being killed in a terrorist attack or the life where you are constantly monitored and have to live in constant fear that that monitoring might pick you up, pick you out of the noise, focus on you, and consider you the threat even if you're not one. This is Feminazi, signing off.